I'm back from riding Velocicoaster, and I just have to say, that ride is, in my opinion, the best roller coaster in the world. And I do not make that statement lightly. I've had the opportunity to ride some of the best roller coasters in the United States of America. Okay, my top five is filled with the likes of Fury 325, of Maverick, of Steel Vengeance, El Toro. I mean, the fact that Velocicoaster tops each of those rides, I'm beside myself right now. The storyline and the buildup and the anticipation coming into the attraction, the brilliance of the queue line and having the first part of the queue line actually weave underneath the second half of the coaster where you in full view can see the top hat and the screaming riders coming down the top hat and and have the ride of their life to the operations i mean the operations were pretty much incredible uh, speaking to one of the staff members uh, they look to have a train out every 50 seconds but this coaster is just immaculate the first half was incredibly surprising i knew the second half would be great but the first half was incredibly surprising. The first half of this roller coaster is world class, in my opinion. The moments of airtime on that first half were downright surprising. Coming out of the launch and into the second Immelman, coming out of that Immelman, the airtime, especially in the front row, was incredible. In the back row, coming off the top hat, the airtime was absolutely insane. And the Mosasaurus roll is what they're calling the Heartline roll. That Mosasaurus roll was 100% stunning. The forces involved on that element are absolutely ridiculous. After riding that element, I completely understand why Intamin had to remove the Heartline roll on Maverick. Because, man, that Heartline roll, that Mosasaurus roll was balls to the wall insane. You literally feel like you are going to be ejected out of your seat and into the lake that is that is central to Islands of Adventure. I mean, it is insane. And then coming out of that, the the two pops of airtime coming into the brake run are absolutely insane. That this entire ride, you literally feel like you are going to be thrown out of your seat. The the collection of ejector airtime on this roller coaster is better than any roller coaster that I've been on, and that includes Steel Vengeance. And the positive G's on certain elements of the ride, from the the pullout of the top hat to um the pull out of the the second inversion in the in the the first section of the ride absolutely incredible the launches while not as forceful as some those launches were still f fairly forceful and incredibly thrilling i i especially enjoyed the second launch coming into that going about 40 miles per hour and then leaving the tunnel going 70 miles per hour what an incredible experience when you when everything comes together, you have this incredibly well themed attraction. Every element of of the coaster was incredibly well thought out. The pacing is immaculate. This is a true masterpiece of a ride. Universal Creative, Islands of Adventure, and Intamin absolutely knocked this ride out of the park. And real quick, can I give the train design a shout? Those restraints are perfect. Incredibly comfortable, and they hold you in enough to hold you in, but you're still, you're still incredibly free. Now it's time to rank Velocicoaster. So I rank coasters based on eight categories, and then I, when it's all said and done, I'll take my score from each of those categories out of ten, and I'll get a final average. And this is how I score the coasters. So. Let's go to first impressions. So on a first impression basis, this coaster is absolutely incredible. The buildup that takes place when you see other riders on the coaster screaming by, it's like nothing else. Some of the best roller coasters in the in the world do not give the rider the experience and the and the benefit of being able to see other riders screaming by. So that is beautiful. If I could give 
a coaster higher than a 10 for first impression and the experience leading up to getting on the ride, I would certainly do it. For this ride, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. The next category that I look at is smoothness. Now, this ride is incredibly smooth, brand new, built by Intamin, well profiled. My only nitpick is there did seem to be in parts of the ride a, a very slight vibration. Now, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is because the wheels haven't been perfectly broken in yet, and sometimes different wheel materials can impact the vibration that is experienced on the ride, and, and I believe that as the coaster continues to run and as the wheels continue to be broken in on the ride, I believe the ride will get will only get smoother. This is by far the smoothest Intamin that I've been on, so let that speak for itself. It's much smoother than i305 it's much smoother than maverick and it's incredible so i'm giving velocicoaster a 9.5 out of 10 on smoothness intensity this coaster is absolutely intense it's absolutely extreme but it's not quite intimidator 305 extreme and and that actually might be a good thing just to add on that Mosasaurus roll, absolute balls to the wall insanity. But for intensity, I'm going to give it a 9.7 out of 10 on intensity. As far as pacing, this ride is immaculate. And again, that's my favorite word for the review, immaculate. But this ride is absolutely immaculate when it comes to pacing. Not to mention that those two launches do so much to add to the pacing of this roller coaster. Needless to say, I'm going to give pacing... A 10 out of 10. Airtime. The airtime moments on this ride are incredible. This ride, in my opinion, and maybe only second to Steel Vengeance, this ride has one of the best collections of airtime that I've ever experienced on a roller coaster. The one thing that I wish this coaster had that it doesn't is it doesn't quite have a moment of sustained flow ejector to ejector airtime uh, similar to the, the airtime hill on Maverick, which is amazing. Th that's just nitpicking. And for that, I'm going to give the airtime a 9.9 .9 out of 10. For creativity, this ride is absolutely phenomenal. What an experience. For the creativity of the element, each of these elements were so beautifully done. These elements are unlike any other coaster that I've had the opportunity to, to ride. I'm giving this ride a perfect 10 out of 10 for creativity. As far as design, the overall ride design, this ride was so well designed. Even the, the, the timing and the operations, I mean, they're cranking out, they're cranking out vehicles. One thing I love about this coaster over Steel Vengeance is the operations for Steel Vengeance can be slow at times, but this ride, they try to get a vehicle out every 48 seconds. And I really, I really appreciate the fact that they want to get as many guests through the line as possible. That, that shows that the park values the time of their guests and really wants their guests to experience this ride for themselves. And that's why I'm giving the design a 10 out of 10. Last but not least, effectiveness. This ride is incredible. I define effectiveness as that feeling that you get when you come into the brake run and you wonder what in the world just happened. And this ride does not disappoint. I mean, the, I mean, coming out of the Mosasaurus roll and into the next two successive airtime moments and then into the brake run, I could not stop laughing hysterically. And this wasn't just the first ride. Each and every successive ride on this ride did not disappoint. This ride gets a perfect 10 out of 10 on effectiveness. So when taking all of the scores and averaging them together, Velocicoaster gets a 9.89 .9 out of 10. And that is amazing because it slightly edges out my previous number one roller coaster in the world, Steel Vengeance, which had a 9.85. Goodbye, Steel Vengeance. Hello, Velocicoaster. You are my new number one. This has been Dustin with Amusement Insiders. 
Thanks for watching and see ya.